On today's episode of the Infinite Loop Show, we get WWDC tickets. Uh, no, we don't. Nobody did. At least not on the West Coast. Oh, yeah. But we did get more viruses. Awesome, yeah. All that and more on the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, welcome to the Infinite Loop Show. This is episode number 14. I'm Michael Gaines. And I'm Casey Coglin. Hi, Casey Coglin. Did you get your WWDC tickets today? No. I was sleeping. <laughs> so, w- we were speculating when WWDC was going to happen in the last episode. We were thinking, well, I mean, you know, people have to make travel plans and everything. Maybe it's going to be August. We don't know. And I wake up this morning. <laughs> You know, first thing I do is I look at my email and it says, no, WWDC, what? WWDC already June 11th. So before I even get a chance to think about it, to wake up and decide whether or not I'm going to go to this thing, sold out. Done. Adios. They made the decision for you. You don't have, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's Apple's new way of even simplifying the, the purchase of WWDC tickets. So you don't even have to think about it. They're already sold out. I haven't been to WWDC in nine years. I really wanted to go this year. I mean, now that I'm actually a, a living, breathing iPhone developer, I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. And it's sold out in two hours. Now, let me see. It used to take like a month to sell out. Then I think last year it took about a week, and now it's two hours. Now, all right. We all understand yes. that everybody's jumping on the iOS ecosystem, and, and and that's fine. But I was not expecting it to sell out in two hours. I thought I had at least about three or four days. Yeah. Um, well, I think I want to say last year it was a matter of hours as well. Mm-hmm. It might have been two years ago that it was, you know, a week or or a matter of days. I I I want to say last year was a matter of hours again. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, this this really reminds me, and I know they're not terribly related. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. But it reminds me of Comic Con. Yep. yep. Every year, you know, that window gets shorter and shorter. And what was it this year? Like 45 minutes? It was, Something like that. It was an hour at the most. We got lucky. And, and yeah, no, totally. And every year, it, that window shrinks, and more and more people get into it and more Mm -hmm. and more people get into that queue to buy which you know either makes me think a you know there are more apple and comic book or (laughs) sci-fi fans than ever before hey it's our time maybe or maybe just conventions and shows as a whole are becoming more and more accepted by popular culture, by society. You know, it's not just for geeks and nerds and and (laughs) shut-ins anymore. Well, maybe it is, but they're getting a little more brave. (laughs) Okay, yeah, yeah, maybe they're not so shut-in and recluse anymore, but... um, like you point. said, I mean, years ago, like the same thing with Comic Con, you could go the day of and buy tickets on site. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't do that no, anymore. Not no, not it's that's laughable. No, we got lucky with with Comic Con tickets, and um, I, you know, I don't know what it is. I was refreshing just as fast as you were, and you got in, and I didn't. But it's because I'm a chick. Is that what it is? No. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> the problem with the WWDC tickets this year is that Apple decided to put them on sale a quarter to six in the morning Pacific time. So, yeah. the- and I'm guessing if any developer is like you or I, they're most likely sleeping in until eleven Pacific time. Well, it's it's just that at a quarter to six Pacific. A lot of people on the West Coast, well, not even just the West Coast, but West Coast Mountain and maybe Central, they're still sleeping or they're or they're commuting. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, right. if exactly. they're on a train, they're on a bus, they're in their car, and, and they see this come up, they have to buy their ticket now, now, now. Yeah. now. And they can't because, right. or well, they could, but it would be a little clunky over 3G or 4G. So a lot yeah. of West Coast people didn't make it. And At least I, with Comic-Con, like they gave you the date ahead of time, so mm-hmm. you knew when you needed <clears throat> to to get on and sit on the site and and you know pound refresh <laughs> with this is like 
the announcement and the the ticket sales were at the same time. So mm -hmm. the minute you got that email, you needed to you had to you do know, it find then. a way to yeah exactly yeah I I really wanted I would really wanted to go I I badly wanted to go and and <laughs> and I, today was like the wrong day to make that decision because there's just so much in real life going on right now today you in know RL? you have those days. IRL when everything just sort of like converges on your life at once. Today was one of those days for me. And so when I finally got a chance to breathe and look at the WWDC site and and look at what you know the the details sold out. So Yeah, don't even look. I have don't a friend even that look works at, at Apple. <clears throat> I have a friend that works at Apple, so we'll see. <laughs> I, that's how I got there the last time. Well, well, so, look at you. I know. Ah. I'm I'm a special snowflake. No, I'm not. I'm kidding. Yeah, I, like yeah. I don't know if I would call him that favor, but old friend of the family, so we'll see. Um and as usual, Apple said that uh there's supposed to be there's supposed to be no blogging, no pictures, no video during the conference at all. Yes. The only thing that so, we're supposed to Leo see Laporte, if you're watching <laughs> I really oh, wouldn't. I feel bad. That, that's that's terrible. <laughs> no, I I love Leo Laporte. Call me. We all do. Um, but I think they've been probably trying to crack down on this for a while. And short of literally kicking people out and you know taking away their pass, yeah, people I think are still going to do it. Yeah, just like oh, it's, sure. it's kind of like jailbreaking. Well, it's, you just set up a fake Twitter account. All you have to do is just use a couple of hashtags and people will follow you and that's it. Mm -hmm. People will be mm -hmm. doing that. So what? The only thing is, I say so what? It, I, I don't mean that frivolously. There are going to be some NDA type items like I'm sure iOS 6 is going to be uh, discussed there. Yeah. And that's right. going to be under NDA. So yeah. Right. Aside, well, are you talking like the individual workshops and panels outside of the main Apple keynote? Well, yeah. Yeah, all the stuff yeah. that happened. Like, there, there's probably going to be. I didn't look at the schedule. I don't even know if the schedule is posted yet. But there's going to be stuff that says, you know, how to do with, you know, how to right. do iOS six this and how to do iOS this or yeah, that yeah, with yeah. iOS six. So there are going to be those things going on. I've been there. I, well, I know what after it's like. the initial keynote, mm -hmm. I mean, once people see the keynote and say, "Oh, that library," you know, where that's going to be available, mm -hmm. then anything dealing with how to deal with derp a derp is probably going to yeah. be. Not so secret. Right. And and there are other things. There are Apple employees. They don't want their stuff broadcast over unofficial channels. Mm -hmm. uh, and Apple does put the videos of all of the uh, the conferences, all the uh, workshops out yeah. for WWDC members afterwards. Like several months. I still have. This is really cool. I have it in the next room. I should bring it in. Is some, it really cool? Time. It's really cool. It's a, it's a, it's a tin box about six inches by nine inches and it's and it's about i don't know maybe four inches thick and it opens up and there are all these dvds of videos of the conference the DVDs entire conference in there oh my god <laughs> yeah old technology it's physical media <laughs> well, that doesn't sound like apple at all i don't even know why i still have it a lot no of the stuff in there is obsolete tin, man. Shit. It, <laughs> should bury that no i'm not gonna bury it it's already a time capsule oh stop it is not <laughs> Oh, okay. Maybe it is. There's some cool stuff in there. I learned a lot about iOS programming. Well, Mac OS 10 programming, programming back mm -hmm. then from uh, from the conferences that I was at. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have to maybe call in a favor or something, and uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's it. That's that's all I've got about WWDC. Do you have anything? Um. Well, I'm not going. And I have no favors to call in, so <laughs> yeah. That's it. It'll be an eventful, yeah. All right. Week for me. Okay. Eh. Um. But uh, in other news, this uh, this ITC judge yeah. says that Apple is actually infringing on Motorola mobility patents. Mm -hmm. Not that you know they're cool or they win or anything. And I put this in the news just because I couldn't remember the last time Apple was really called to task on one of these patent lawsuits. Mm -hmm. I know they're a dime a dozen now. Oh, they are. But when was the last time Apple actually lost one? 
Oh, I mean, they didn't lose I'm the whole not... thing. There was, was like four patents that they, uh, Motorola was suing over. So it's one out of four, but... Yeah, I you know, I, I don't keep score on that. And I'm sure they've lost some... And I should probably list them somewhere so that I, I have a reference to it. I don't to, think they uh, won every one that they've they brought up. I'm sorry, what? We need to keep like a a running scoreboard, and we can you know, just <laughs> keep it in the back. Mm-hmm. Won and lost. Um, I I tried doing some research. I, I actually um I saw this earlier this afternoon, and I was debating. You added this to our our um article list. I was going to add it and. I didn't, not because Apple lost. That has nothing to do with it. I am just so tired of the whole patent infringement scenario oh, across the entire what? technology. How can spe- you be tired of patents? Oh my God. They're like <laughs> it's swimming it's in-, in them. The Ugh. patent lawsuits, they they choke the the news cycle. How can you be tired of I, them? I don't like, look, I am all for companies protecting their intellectual property, but I don't like how these companies are going about it because it seems like the, the reason why, okay, the reason why I didn't bring this up uh, is because they lost against one of them, but they won against the other three. There were four total. Mm-hmm. And I thought, well, that's more or less a wash. You know, Apple, Apple it's, more it's or less won three, win. lost one. Yeah. Right. And then, and then I found out I did a little reading on this about an hour ago. It turns out that Microsoft was sued by uh, my, uh, Motorola mobility and they lost four out of five for the Xbox 360. Hmm. And that didn't even really make the major news. And that didn't, yeah, that didn't make the news. And then I found out that Google is buying Motorola, Motorola yeah. Mobility. So what does this mean for the whole Android, iPhone, Windows? Wait, you just now found that out? Uh, I, I know I remembered it from a while ago, but it was, I think it was like what half a year ago or something i just forgot yeah, it. yeah that was like at least six months ago yeah it was it was a while ago i remember like motorola mobility uh, i remember that, that there was big news that um mm-hmm. that they were getting bought and then i just sort of like forgot about it well i don't but, think it's official yet because i no. want to say um because google and motorola had to go uh through all these courts and all the different countries to kind of sanction this um buyout mm-hmm. and i be- i want to say it's being hung up in either china or um oh. uh, somewhere in scandinavia i think it's china but yeah the, it it hasn't officially passed yet mm-hmm. um passed muster in all these countries that they actually have offices um but yeah not only is motorilla suing like everybody under the sun in this um they're being sued. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, and, <laughs> and this is why I don't like bringing up patent lawsuit articles because for every no, one, everyone that- is suing everyone for everything, and the patents are so like ridiculous and vague. And because of this, because we have kind of this environment, everybody, you know, to guard against it, either. You know, buys up other companies with a lot of patents, mm-hmm. which people are, are kind of guesstimating that is why Google is buying Motorola Mobility, mm-hmm. not to have a hardware arm, but rather for their patents. Yeah. Um, but everybody feels like they need to patent everything they do, and so then the patents get even more frivolous and stupid, and just <laughs> in general. <laughs> yeah, like. The, uh, a device that, for talking to your mom. What? What? Well, what? that company that's suing <laughs> Apple now, like all touch devices. Oh, the the, like, the, the company. Oh, our, our little our patent for moving objects on a touch screen. So clearly, all Apple's you know line of products and rumored future touch screen, uh, iMacs and MacBook Pros. We're 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 taking all that. Yeah. it's all we're suing all that shit. Yeah. I read an article that um, that was uh, an interview with Tim Cook, and he said that they would rather just settle, but they're going to defend their their IP, and I think that they should. At, at, and, and conversely, I also think that companies like Motorola and everybody they should defend the, their intellectual property as well. Like I said, I just don't like how this whole thing is going about because every day, almost every day, somebody is suing someone, and then I, yeah. I don't keep track of this stuff as much as I should. And I am not a lawyer, you know, but. I I don't understand if everything comes out 
in, in a wash, why don't they just, instead of suing, maybe they just do it for official challenge, but why don't they just go to Apple and say, look, here's this, you've got this, we think that you took it from us, but you've got this, we've got this that we think that maybe we took from you, why don't we just cross license it? And, and wouldn't that be easy? I don't know. Why go through all this time and money and effort to make it official when I, these companies are smart? I, I guess they just want to yeah. fight it. Yeah, no, I mean, because how else would they um, measure the penises? I mean, <laughs> really, if you took that away. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's the e peen factor. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this is. It's the e peen factor. A little, a little bit. bit. All right. <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, of Apple in court, there's a blogger who says that he took Apple to court over his failing MacBook Pro and won. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting yeah. case. And th this guy, he, he bought a MacBook Pro, 2008, I believe, 2008 MacBook Pro. No, yeah, yeah, that was, I think, the year NVIDIA was uh, having questionable graphics cards. Right, so it kept failing on him. The, the MacBook Pro kept failing on him because of the video card, and eventually the thing mm -hmm. died. So, <laughs> this is interesting. He brought it to an Apple genius who said, well, we can't boot it, so we can't tell you how to fix it, so you're going to have to pay 600 bucks to get it fixed. And he didn't want to do that. Mm. So, he took Apple to small claims court. Mm -hmm. And and this, this is where things get interesting. I'm going to cut to, to the chase. Is that the judge asked Apple, how much would it actually cost you, Apple, to repair this. And Apple said, well, nothing, because Motor um, um, NVIDIA foots the bill for that. So the judge is like, well, why are you here? If it costs you nothing <laughs> to fix it, why don't you just fix this guy's computer? And, and, and Apple lost, and this guy won. Awesome. And I'm looking at this article, and I'm thinking, and, and again, I am not a lawyer, but why wouldn't Apple just do the right thing? Because look, look how many times people bust their iPhones. And mm -hmm. you take it into an Apple store and they say, here's a new and one. And they say, yeah, no, they say that'll be $199. Or, or something, some nominal fee, but not all this money. And what I think is that when you buy something like a MacBook Pro, which could be like $2,500, $3,000, um, mm -hmm. the problem is that if, if Apple knows that there's an issue with the hardware, just fix it because that's what Apple does. I don't. I don't understand what's going on here because this is so much unlike what Apple does. Traditionally, I want to agree, but lately, um, from what I've been, you know, experiencing at the Apple stores, they're really and. But this this is kind of an old case. This goes back a few years. Yeah. Lately, and and I mean, like within the last six months, lately, it seems Apple stores have really been cracking down on those kind of niceties, you know, free replacements, uh, one offs here and there, uh, for hardware and and fixing stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they used to be kind of the norm, um, and you know. A, a great perk of buying an Apple product and getting to go to the Apple store is they, you know, were really cool about either replacing your phone or just, you know, fixing a screen or something like that. Yeah, so um, long as the problem wasn't caused by you. Uh, well, I mean, even even still, I mean, depending, obviously, on the situation, if you ran it over with your car... <laughs> you know, well, then it's probably on you. Well, yeah. But I mean, I I accidentally jumped in a pool once with my phone. It worked for a little while, but they said, "Look, you jumped in a pool. You're gonna have to." I'm like, "All right, you know what? I was dumb. I actually <laughs> were on vacation, and I went to jump in the pool, and I you know, I took my keys and my wallet out. I jump in the pool, and <laughs> just as I'm in midair, I'm like, <gasps> and I fell in the water. <laughs> of course, because you were in midair. <laughs> yeah." Um, yeah, no, I left, you know, when the iPad one first came out and I got it, I had it in the front pocket of my laptop bag mm -hmm. and that ended up being on the bottom of a trunk full of suitcases, oh, snap. um, traveling ones and all the, just the weight, you know, cracked the screen of the new iPad. Sure. Yeah. Um, I guess it was my fault. Sure. Um, <laughs> you guess. I, okay. It was totally my fault. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, they they replaced it. You know, with a oh, they a did new, a refurbished iPad. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I mean, stuff like that. Like I've bought an, I've gotten the the thirty inch cinema display. Mm-hmm. You know, off Craigslist once, and the screen was uh, not really up to par. I mean, it, it was working, but it was really um, the discoloration was really bad, mm-hmm. and that should have been like a three or four hundred dollar repair. They did that for free one time. Um, was it under Apple Care? It was. It was way out of warranty. Okay. Um, you know, I got it off Craigslist, and I took it in to see because I knew something was kind of off, and um, and they were really cool about it. But they lately, like I said, they've just really been cracking down on that, and it's probably from a, a monetary perspective. You know that maybe they're just losing money being too nice. Maybe, but... but they've got billions of dollars. No, see, no, they have to save their I, money. They're, I understand you know, that. They don't have that much left. It's it's only a couple <laughs> hundred billion. billion. <laughs> they can't just keep replacing iPhones and iPads willy-nilly. No, I look, the way that I see it is that if you busted your device, then you're responsible for it. But if there's something yeah. that maybe went wrong with it... For example, um, the, see, oh, no, yeah, let me, let me the give an example. Nvidia one is a to- is a perfect example where it should have been a, a under warranty and be covered by the manufacturer. My wife's iPhone 3S, three S, three S, right? Three GS. Three GS. It's been so long. I don't remember. That's the one. My oh, iPhone, I know. It's like a her beer iPhone's three GS. The the left quarter of the screen died, and, the, and it, like you can see the video, but the touch screen part didn't work. And she brought it into the Apple store, and they said it's going to cost you 200 bucks to get it fixed. I went, mm-hmm. really? They're not taking it back, even though the thing was only like a year old at the time. I thought that was strange. Was so she wound up price? getting a... F- uh, no, but it, it just seems very un-Apple-like for them to do that. Whereas like like yeah. your monitor got replaced for free, and that costs more. Maybe it's because I'm a chick. Well, my wife's a chick. <laughs> oh. All right, you got me there. So I don't know about that. Different stores, different policies. Maybe somebody was in a better mood when you went in. I I do believe that comes into play. Um, I can tell you, you know, working for for Geek Squad, even it you don't it shouldn't and you don't mean for it, but sometimes you know if you're just not having a good day or any number of reasons, it can really kind of color your judgment on how much you want to help somebody. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um. All right. So, how much do you like uh, T-Mobile? <laughs> T-Mobile's like not even talked about around here. At least not in my neck of the woods. Nobody I know has a T-Mobile phone. Nobody. Yeah, I I know maybe one or two people that are on T-Mobile. Mm-hmm. Probably because it's the only carrier that still doesn't have the iPhone. Uh, well, I don't know may- about that, <laughs> but maybe. Well, I mean, you got, you know, all these random Alaska and Appalachia uh, <laughs> carriers now that have the iPhone and T-Mobile still out in the cold. Yes. Which may be why they're specifically targeting iPhone owners mm-hmm. in this new drive to push the HTC One S. Mm-hmm. You can get one for free if you trade in your iPhone for mm-hmm. a limited time. Oh, so if I take my iPhone 3GS, it doesn't work. No, I'm kidding. Sure, try it. No, um, I don't think there might work. be some fine print on their uh, on their retail site, but uh, all their ads are saying, you know, bring in an iPhone, and they don't specify four or four S. They just say bring in an iPhone, put it in, and you'll get a free HTC One S. Really? So if I mm-hmm. take my old iPhone One, my original, they're not <laughs> specifying. So maybe that's interesting. Uh, here, here in my area, New Jersey, New York, um, there are T-Mobile stores. There were two in my area. One of them closed, and I never see. I, I look at these things. And I never see anybody in the other T-Mobile store by me. And I don't know, like T-Mobile is just. They were a player years ago. Years ago. But not anymore. And, no. And and um, maybe I, in the prepaid space, they're a player. Maybe, maybe. So for drug dealers. <laughs> So if beepers are out and prepaid are in, mm-hmm. okay. Um, 
No, I. They don't have the iPhone, and they're trying to compete now. This HTC that this has what version of Android on it? Um. Do you know? I don't know. I want to say. I hope it has at least three, maybe four. Yeah, it should be ice cream sandwich. Yeah, that's four. But yeah. I. My my point being is that my issue with Android is that sometimes you buy a phone that's brand it's new and it whatever. comes with it comes with Android too. Um, but I don't know if this is really going to push anybody over to T-Mobile for an HTC. Look, I've been I've been looking at some of the reviews on the HTC One S. Some people really like it. I'm not a fan of HTC. Well, I'm not a fan of Android. Period. But I'm yeah. not a fan of HTC in particular. I, their Sense UI is the worst mm. and i haven't seen a phone that they didn't try to spread that over it mm. okay all right so you wouldn't be lured into uh going over to t-mobile oh yeah you know i i kind of you know hummed and hawed and, and considered and weighed my options and then after a lengthy debate i decided fuck no <laughs> Really, was it a lengthy debate to come up to that to no. conclusion? No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's T-Mobile, it's an Android phone, and it's HTC. Wow. Let me just, you know, freaking cut my legs off. Damn, and... you're like a raging fangirl today. Mm-hmm. Wait, it's every yeah. day. Just today. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Google Drive came out. They give you five gigabytes of storage in a weird terms of service. Yay! All right, so Google Drive, and people are wondering why Google is doing this. Well, why not? Google is allowing people. Everybody to, else is. Yeah, Google is allowing people to have five gigabytes of cloud space. Yeah. And 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 okay, it was expected. It actually took longer than I expected for it to happen. I figured yeah. this would have come out yeah. a year ago. This was kind of rumored for a long time. Yeah, because people were using, they're using Google Docs to embed files somehow so that they can have uh, cloud storage that way. And so now mm-hmm. this is an official Google Docs, uh, I'm sorry, Google Drive uh, option. And so you download an app similar to Dropbox and it puts the, this this file-based system on your Mac. Well, okay, but then it's got this bizarre terms of service which basically said, now here's the thing. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of reading about this but none of it has been conclusive apple says this is your stuff dropbox says this is your stuff google says this is your stuff but we have the right to mess around with it as much as we want yeah we want to alter it which i'm thinking is probably for translation purposes yes and then we also reserve the right to use it to promote See, that, that I'm a little iffy about. I don't want my stuff being used to promote their service. That You I, don't I, want I, your emails and documents <laughs> used in a gur- Google, gurgle, gurgle? Google commercial? You know, the thing is that all these companies, they always say that they're going to use your stuff for promotional use. But whoever really has done that? I know that Flickr has. I, Flickr did it, right? Flickr used people's stuff, and I believe Picasa? I think they're just trying to be proactive and say, like, well, maybe in the far-flung future, if we get really desperate and come across something we like, we'd like to be able to use it. Yeah, I'd like to be able but to I use it. I think most of the time they're going to be using, you know, actors and actresses and and um, stock, you know, stuff and supplied stuff they're not going to be using actual users documents or scenarios or anything like that right i'm just not comfortable with a company that says that they can blindly use my stuff to like what if i what i I don't know what the process is of picking somebody's stuff first off they have to go through your stuff in order to find it and then what if they find look um here's um uh here's a picture of a logo that uh casey and i are working on and nobody's supposed to see don't they even ask look we want to use this picture can we and then you know because the terms of services oh you can use yes you can use our stuff then they just take it it. and then i go well that's no that's why i'm sticking with dropbox you're sticking with dropbox i use dropbox um i haven't even signed up for the google drive and i was thinking about doing it because i heard at first you know the what it was like two or three bucks 
a month for more and, storage. Yeah, and who can't use more storage, really? So it was standing all right, and then um, you know more and more reports about the terms of service started coming out. Um, I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe I mean maybe eventually, but I'm not gonna get right on it. I mean I don't really need it right now. I've got no. iCloud and Dropbox and Box.net and everything else under the sun. Yeah. There was one other point about the terms of service that I wanted to bring up. This is important: is that maybe the the terms of service were worded. This is what people are expect or thinking that the terms of service are worded in such a way where it's so broad to cover Google for purposes. You said translation, but I also thought about transferring files from one position to another. Meaning, when they say they have the right to modify. That could mean that if you move a file from one folder to another, you're, destro- that as a yeah, modification. you're destroying mm-hmm. it on one folder and then you're moving it to another. That's technically called a modification. Well, that could I be guess it. if you or, really, really want to get... What I'm thinking is if, if that's the terms that Google is writing that language under, why not be a mm-hmm. little more clear about what it is that they're doing? Saying, we have the right to do this because of this... Scenario. We're destroying files <laughs> and creating new ones. Because here. when you make it broad like that, they could say, look, you know, we're just going to come in here. We're going to delete your stuff for no reason. Or because we don't like you, Casey. Yeah. We don't yeah. like you because you're a Start Mac chick and we're going to delete your yeah. stuff. It's all right. It's because I'm not using a Chromebook. I understand. <laughs> one in five Macs are supposed to have a Windows virus on it. I knew it. <laughs> There was a uh, there was a report that came out. I, I, you know, I don't know how real this is. One in five Macs is supposed to have a Windows virus. What this means is that it's it's like being a carrier for a virus yes. in in real life, it, like for for humans. Is that you may have a virus that you're passing We're on to other hosts. people. Yeah. So if you're since your Mac can't execute Windows code, you may still pass that along through documents and such. The other issue is. Um, Boot camp is that your Mac, you may think that because you run a Mac that you're invulnerable to viruses. Well, you are if it's a Windows virus on your Mac running under Mac OS. But well, even still on the boot camp side, um, because that boot camp, isn't that boot camp running in like a partition on top of it is. Unix? It, it, so it, it's not going to be able to do a hell of a lot of harm. Even if it screws up that Windows partition, you can right. still take that out. Worst case scenario, take that out and redo it. It's not going to really get anything. Right. It's, 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 well, see, that's the thing is that I don't know. The way the operating system works is that if you give your Windows partition right access to a Mac-based folder on that same hard though. drive, well, you can't can even you can't um, share on, a drive. Well, you can share a drive, I mean, like a folder, an external rather? drive. I mean, a folder. But I'm sorry. from from the Windows partition, you, uh, you can't read the Mac partition. On the Mac side, you can read and pull stuff off of the, the Windows, Windows partition, partition right. but on the Windows side, you can't even see or pull from the Mac side. You sure about that? I thought mm-hmm. you could. Hmm. Unless something's changed. I mean, recently, it's been like that for un- since Boot Camp came out. Okay. Windows has always been like the kludgy one. But whereas the Mac, you know, kind of the Mac side can see everything. Windows is kind of just over here in the corner, just doing its own little thing, yeah, unaware it, of everything else. Yeah, because Windows out of the box can't read the Mac uh, journal file system. No, I mean, and you can, in, yeah, I mean, obviously you install the hardware driver so it, it knows about that, mm-hmm. but um, it it can't see or read files from the Mac side of your hard drive okay right anyways um oh and another uh add-on to that malware again yet again i know another variant to the flashback virus um utilizing the same java loophole yay uh, more copycats out there but the same fix from apple and um, the same software update will patch this as well so if you haven't done it yet yet another reason to do your software updates seriously yeah 
I, I haven't. Then again, I'm still running an old version of 10.6. I was going to say, <laughs> you have more than a couple software updates to do. Yeah, my I know. Well, that's because I'm afraid that anytime I do an update, it's going to break my drivers for my audio system and that I wouldn't be able to do all this. So, Well, you know, this malware might break more than that. <laughs> I so. know. Okay. Um, there's a new uh, app. Well, it's not out yet. It's being developed by MIT. But it sounds pretty promising. It's called Newsflash, and it's an app for tablets. Um, I believe they're developing it on the iPad, but will develop it for other Android-based uh, mm -hmm. tablets. But what it does, it, it transmits data from your tablet to your smartphone via uh, light signals, essentially, whereas it uses the screen uh, to flicker on and off repeatedly faster than the naked eye can see. And then if you have your smartphone's camera hovering over that, um, the camera will pick up that uh, light difference and that will actually transmit data like uh, simple links and such to your smartphone. Oh, I see. It's interesting. So basically it's using light as a data transmission, mm -hmm. as opposed to yeah, it's kind just of using, using like a, a on off, you know, like yeah. almost a force code, but it's doing it. It's blinking faster than the eye can see. So if you're looking at your iPad while it's doing this, while it's transferring, you're not going to see any difference. It's doing it faster than the eye can see, but the uh, the smartphone, especially like the iPhones, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ma high megapixel camera is going to pick that up kind of like a qr code kind of yeah um but it'll pick that up you have to be running the app on on both and then it'll pick that up and, and transfer something like a link or you know a small amount of data what would be the advantage of that versus bluetooth or, or nfc um, or just even simple wi-fi I yeah i don't know either because i'm i uh, i didn't read the article but just thinking about it I don't it sounds cool like if if it's just something that normally you would say copy and paste mm -hmm. you know over from one document to another you could in a sense like copy and paste really quickly between your two devices um, but like you said yeah I mean Bluetooth could do this I don't know of any apps that actually do this mm -hmm. do do this um, that bump app between <laughs> you know smartphones, we'll do it with your contacts, and there's some apps, um, and NFC will will do that. But for the most part, there isn't. I mean, even though we have technology like Bluetooth that'll do this um, within you know a short range or even over Wi-Fi, there aren't a lot of apps that'll do that. No, there aren't. I, I, there well, are I ones that like, see the point hey, there, you yeah. know, uh, transferred links or something. Yeah. Um, there's just nothing that'll do that. Though, the first thing I thought of when I heard this, because the people reviewing it were saying like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. You know, all the time I come across this scenario where, you know, I find a link on, say, my iPhone, but I want to send it to my iPad or Mac, um, you know, but then I have to, like, text it to myself or email it to myself. Mm, um, not if you have iCloud. I thought of was reading list. Yeah. I do that all the time in Safari. But what and you can, that works beautifully. But what you can do is you can if you have iCloud you can sync your links. Yes, and yeah, yeah. You can do it that way. So Safari. you could do so reading list is pretty much the same thing because mm -hmm. it's you know, sending something to reading list, it's pretty much making a, a bookmark in Safari. And then the minute you make it, it's on either your iPad or your Mac if everything's synced up with iCloud. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I do that for work stuff all the time. Okay. And and if it's just a link that I'm worried about, yeah, that's, that's no big deal. Um, I, I just wonder why they would use light, even if a person can't see it, when they can just pop up a tiny little window with like a QR code or something and just use that. I, I, I'm, I'm just not... Because um, light is cooler. Ah, light is cooler. Because then you're, <clears throat> you're 
literally beaming it from one device to another. You should, you know, <laughs> you should love this being the the Trek fan. That oh, you because like. you have to use the word beaming. Uh, yes. I see. Beam is synonymous with Trek, therefore you must love it. All right, I beam this. <laughs> There is a prediction that Apple is going to cut the 17-inch MacBook Pro. A um, <gasps> <laughs> analyst Ming-Chi Kuo with KGI Securities said that, and, and uh, according to the article that I read, that he's usually right. Oh, he's, well, he's, we he's, must listen to him. <laughs> he said that uh, Apple is going to discontinue the 17-inch MacBook Pro, that he predicts that they're going to uh, mm. discontinue it. The reason why is is because of sagging sales. Now, I have an older 17-inch MacBook Pro. I can understand why people would not want to because if they're on the road, they're heavy, they're bulky. I've taken 17-inch machines on the road before. And let me tell you something. Yeah. When you're sitting on a Continental flight Mm -hmm. and you pull that tray out and you put your 17-inch laptop on it and you you can't open it all the way, I can understand why people won't buy 17-inch monitors. 17 inch machines because of the monitor so mm-hmm. you buy a 15 inch or smaller and then you can hook it up using you know whatever mini dvi or or thunderbolt or something and then you can you know use a 30 inch machine you know, fine a 30 inch monitor so this this may actually be true um yeah no i know the only reason traditionally people have i think gotten the 17 inch not just for the bigger uh, display is because traditionally the 17 inch has always been the beefier machine. Mm-hmm. You couldn't get True. the top mobile graphics card or even CPU unless you kicked it up to the 17. Mm-hmm. But now lately they've been um, they've been putting the i7s in the 15 in the higher end 15. They've been putting the top graphics card in the the higher 15. You know they'll have Mm-hmm. Two or three. I think they're down to two right now. Uh, 15s. So, yeah, for traveling. And, I mean, what other reason would you get a laptop as opposed to a desktop if you weren't traveling all the time? Right. I, I used mean, to I've love always, it. I've always gotten 15s or smaller. Um, my first was the 12, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. And I got the 13, and I love that one. I'm up to a 15 now, but I can't imagine um using a 17 really even though it doesn't seem like it's that much bigger it, um it may, it's bulkier yeah uh, yeah and the bags for 17s yeah they they seem like even though the the 17 compared to a 15 isn't that much bigger the bag that you have to put it in feels exponentially bigger than mm-hmm. the 15s bag right yeah True. anyways yeah Sad times, though, if they discontinue that. <laughs> I know some I people mean, would be not, not as much as they discon- if they would discontinue the Mac Pro, but you know that's just me. Oh no, no, I don't think they'll discontinue the whole Pro line. They have to keep at least <laughs> one machine one. beaten. <laughs> yeah, um, but hey, we have an alternative to the Mac App Store now. Should you not want to go there? <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't want to go there, but some people don't want to, but okay. Some people don't want to put their apps there. Yeah, no, I think it's more for the developers than the customers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, anybody who uses or has used the Mac App Store, um, it's pretty nice and and convenient and everything hooks up and it's synced and everything. Um, but in any case, there's something out now called the Hack Store. Mm-hmm which is an alternative to the Mac App Store. So this is for Mac OS, not the iOS platform. But it and it's not, you know, for jailbroken Macs or anything like that. Yeah. It's for legitimate software. It's a it's an unfortunate name. I I I don't know if I would want even though you and I know that it's legit. I don't know if I would want to go to someplace called the Hack Store. But and be associated with yeah, and, and, jailbreaking possibly. Or or not only that, but you know, stuff that might have like malware on it, they should have given it some more <laughs> reputable name instead of calling it the Hack Store. Yes, yes. Get your new software from the Hack Store with a free copy of malware. <laughs> Yay! Malware Fighter now on Mac OS Seven. Malware um, actually injects malware into your machine. <laughs> 
I took a look at this earlier. It it's legit, but uh, you know, it, it it to me, I would think as a developer, I would just want to put it up on the on the official app store because but, you everybody but sees it. They take thirty percent. Oh, do they? Oh my! Like, how can you give that up? It's thirty percent, three zero. Let me ask you something though. This this the person who put up hack store. Mm-hmm. He's he's not charging anything for the apps that are up there, right? Is this some sort of aggregator? Um, I believe so. What, what I mean by that is people don't have to It's not actually a marketplace that it's just a place of links. Right. So if you put up an app and you want to promote it, you want to sell it. You basically go through this hack store and it says, so "Oh, here are your product. Yeah, here are your productivity apps." And then it, it just sends you to the, the the websites themselves. That's what I think. Yeah, I don't know if they're actually getting money um, off the links, like some sort of Amazon affiliate program, or <laughs> if they're just doing it out of the goodness of their heart. See, and then if 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 this is, is successful, and the developers get wind of the fact that this is making money. And then they're going to start demanding. And then revolt, parts. and then we get a new hack. But this store. is how things happen: is the that they say, "Well, the hack store. Well, look, you're making a lot of money off of Amazon links. Uh, I guess maybe they're doing a service. Do you think that it's right for the developers to say, "Look, you know, well, we're making money off the apps directly without the thirty percent, but you're making money off of us." Yeah. I don't know. These these are the things that that make people angry. When you start getting money involved, then. Then developers start getting Everybody all busy. Everybody wants a piece. Everybody wants their finders. Yep, fee. they do. It's and, all Hollywood. And speaking of money, Apple posted <laughs> their quarterly revenues. This is amazing. Eleven points. Did they make money? They they made a little bit of change. Eleven point six billion dollars in profit. Thirty nine. Thirty nine point two billion dollars in revenue. It, it it just boggles my mind. It's like we all love Apple, but I still can't. I can't fathom that much money. So it says that they sold. You don't have to. It's okay. I know. You don't have to think about it. Just they, like all things Apple. Don't think about it. <laughs> they sold 35.1 million iPhones in the quarter. Just that, in the that's quarter. Enough. That's 88% percent growth versus last year. 11.8 million iPads were sold. 151% increase over the same quarter from last year. That's more than 100%. 4 million max, and you know that some of these, I mean, the, the iPad and the iPhone, we, we all know that those, those are like the gateway drugs into the Mac. Yes, yeah, that's so. how we get them in here. <laughs> 4 million max sold, and 7.7 million iPods were sold. Wow. I heard, yeah, I heard iPods were going down They year are? Year. But that's mm-hmm. expected because people are buying the phones. Yeah. Okay, so now you're a father. Would you, if, I mean, I how old your youngest? Um, let me see. Uh, there's a birthday coming up. Um, oh, you better answer this correctly. 12. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is that, I don't know, is that too young for a phone? No, she's got a phone. Oh, she's already got a phone. She's already All got right. a phone. Um, this is a bad example. <laughs> I don't know. Like when? <laughs> when do you? You know, because it, it just seems like the iPod Touch would still be the perfect thing for kids who are too she, young for phones. But what's too young for a phone? Then I well, guess. Well, I, see, the thing is, it's it. Here's the thing: as as a parent of of of, of a technology based house, mm-hmm. and with other technology based friends in mm-hmm. school. Are you just keeping up with the Joneses? You, you're Joneses sure, well, that then? too, but but the fact that it's nice for a child to be out and they have a phone in case something goes wrong. Yeah. Okay. So so there's that because I'm sure like when I was growing up, I used to ride my bike around wherever, and I'm yeah. sure it would have been nice if if you know because because you know it used to be like you take a couple dimes with you. That would be your thing because there was a phone, oh. there was a payphone on every corner. So you would take okay. a couple of dimes with you, and, and that's how you would get in touch with people. Whereas now, you, you just have the phone, and then you have the apps, and you have the iPod you know, built in, and, and you have YouTube and all, all that. You have Yes, you have the YouTubes. Every time I need to call my mom and make a YouTube <laughs> video, and I send it to her. Okay. But I know there are some people that say that 
like I, I know there are kids out there. I see them. They're like six, seven years old, and they've got phones already. I know. That, I think, is a little too young. Because at yeah, that point, I, I don't agree. think the kid needs to have their own phone because they're still under know. parental supervision. Yeah. And what are they going to say on their phone? Nothing. What? what yeah. But, what meaningful conversations or important declarations <laughs> are they going to be proclaiming on their phones at well, that age? I don't know. Maybe it's different for boys than girls. Yeah. Would you agree? Even You're a girl. Less, yes. It's even less important dribble that's going to be coming out of a guy on his phone at six years old. So, yeah. All right. Well, you know, amongst all these high earnings Apple's having, Mm -hmm. HTC, not so much. And uh, they're directly blaming Apple in the iPhone 4S for their dip in sales. Hey, you got to keep up. 70% 70% drop in profit. That's a lot. And 35% year over year. And now they're trying to use T-Mobile for this trade in an iPhone promotion. Yep, yep. It all comes back around. But they're, that's great. Like, I mean, I know HT sucks and all, but 70% drop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, tell us how you really feel. That, that might as well be BlackBerry numbers. <laughs> that might as well. Uh... When I when HTC first came out, I was kind of hoping that they would do better, and they didn't. <laughs> oh, end of story. And they didn't. End of story. I was sort Full of silently though. rooting for them. Why? I, well, because I. All right. This goes back to what the what the phone culture was like around the time the iPhone was released. There were there were there were phones. Well, there were Blackberries and there were Nokia's. And, you know, you, you know your N95s and your, mm-hmm. you know, your Sony Ericsson, the W800s. They weren't very smartphones, but some of them had a lot of funky features. Then the iPhone comes out, and then, to be fair, when HTC came out, I thought, well, that would be actually kind of nice because then you'd have some nice competition. And I was I was looking at the phone. I didn't like the way it was built. I didn't. I didn't like the way it felt. I. I just. I didn't like it, but nope. like physically. But I liked the yeah. idea of what they were doing, okay. and didn't work. <laughs> and so, and, and this is see. This is what I. This is what I mean when, when people say, "Well, why do you like Apple?" And and not to sound like a fanboy, but because they know how to sell to people. They know what people yeah. want, and they know how to build the hardware in such a way where it. It feels right, and it it doesn't feel clunky. Well, if if HTC were able to do that, then they wouldn't have their seventy percent drop in profit. And they're yeah, blaming probably. the iPhone. Want to blame yourself? Yeah. No. 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 They have a perfectly good product. If the <laughs> iPhone didn't exist, <laughs> HTC through the roof. Clearly. Right. Okay. Clearly, the problem sure. here is iPhones. Right. Like a boss. <laughs> in the no comment section <laughs> I thought of this when, I thought of you when I saw this I know <laughs> so you and like everybody else I know really. yeah I know because I posted I it getting, and it was like I was getting links I know from <laughs> Casey's everyone. gonna want this yeah oh you can see I saw something with an apple on it did you hear about this it's got an apple on it yeah. like it. <laughs> there's a Ricky MacBook Pangirl. perfume project <laughs> they call it Eau de Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It smells of his bald head. Oh, stop. So it it it, it smells so like a MacBook. What does it smell like? I, I they say it smells Aluminum? like a MacBook. I I don't know. I mean, I haven't actually smelled it. What are you, are you smelling your MacBook? I don't smell anything. Is that what it smells like? Is it supposed know. to smell like nothing? I'm not going to smell my MacBook Pro. I'm not doing it. Oh, uh, I know, I know. Okay, so it they're going after Apple's, you know, minimalist design, and it's literally <laughs> just water, and so it has no odor. It's odorless <laughs> because it's the most minimalist scent you can have. No scent. <laughs> yeah, it smells like a sweatshop in China. <laughs> oh, snap. You went there. I did go there. No, I, I realized, look, everything has a smell when you, when you unbox it. Books do... Um, electronics do mm-hmm. like when you open that new blu-ray player ah 
It smells right? like styrofoam. It, well, no, it doesn't smell like styrofoam. Oh, but Mac, it smells but like I, no, plastic. Apple, Apple, Max, they they have their own distinct smell. Also, cars, new car smell. New cars, but smell. I don't know if I don't know who would want this. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you pick up the women's with this. Yeah, when I go to the club, <laughs> I spray some MacBook on me. I oh, don't know. God. All right, I'm done talking about this. Um. <laughs> hey, so uh, for all you uh, hipsters out there, oh, careful! We have a do-it-yourself cell phone. Mm-hmm. It's running ice cream sandwich. It uh, it's pretty legit. <laughs> What's say. a do-it-yourself cell phone? <laughs> so you build it yourself. It's a oh. box of components. <laughs> really? And you build it yourself, and it looks like an old Nokia phone. It's a, it's a brick, <laughs> and it's got a little screen, and it's all oh, like that. particle board, like puzzle pieces that <laughs> fit together, and the buttons are all there, like. With perforated, kind of, so they press in and, yeah. And it's got, like, this screw-on, like, thick, you know, rubber antenna like the old days. (laughs) Like, it's some sort of satellite phone. So everybody will know you're using the legit do-it-yourself cell phone. Oh, my God. I I saw pictures of this thing. It it looks like one of those those little mini phones. Well, mini. I mean, the, 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 the big, giant phones from the 80s. Yes. I yes. say mini phones because they used to have bigger ones, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. God, those things now are huge. Now every phone will look like a mini phone compared to this thing. And then all you got to do is spray it with some MacBook perfume and you're all golden. There you go. <laughs> oh, there you go. You're welcome, people. We just fixed it for you. All right. We're going to move on to culture. Yeah, we're digging it. So, I'm in the car. And (laughs) I'm in the car. And this goes back to what I was talking about, uh, I think, an episode or two ago, where I I was trying to use um, iCloud, our iTunes Match, to play playlists in the car. Mm -hmm. And, And this is part of the problem, is that for some reason, iTunes asked me for my security password. Yes. And so I'm in the car. And I'm like, oh, really? Really? Now? Can't this thing tell that I'm moving? No. I, no? No. I don't want to type in my password now. I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road. So Do I, it. So I get to where I'm going, Best Buy, and I put my password in. I put my password in while I'm in the parking lot. And I'm like, and it, and it says, well, you need to have these security questions. And so, so this oh, is the story. Didn't do that's, this yet. No, I didn't do this yet. But I think it does it if you if you are asked your security question or you do it wrong or something like yeah. that. Yeah. No, I um I got it. What was it? I got it midweek and last week, and mm-hmm. I think because it was when. It wasn't when, like, I had to enter in any of my billing data or anything. Mm -hmm. It was just during the the routine, you know, times when the App Store asks for your password whenever you try to download something. Mm -hmm. And so it asked for my password, and then it was like, oh, hey, remember these things you didn't do yet? You want to make these security questions now? So, um, yeah, yeah, it, it pops up. If you haven't done it, the next time any of the app stores or music stores ask you for your password, it does it then. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> such an inconvenient time for them to ask me my security questions. Every but... time is going to be an inconvenient time, really. Well, yeah. So I think I'm going to go back to using a USB, um, uh, USB thumb drive for awesome. my music now or something like that. But anyway, yeah, it, it just asked me my, my questions and, and then it, Asked me for a recovery email address, so I put that in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then like a day later, I get an email from from Apple that says <clears throat> it asked me they asked me if my me dot com address was was going to be my um, my recovery email, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm get more than one. So I figured if I can have more than one, then I'm also just do it. So I do, and I check the headers. Because I wanted to make sure that it was legit, and it was, and and it says nope, invalid, uh, invalid address. So I found out that you can only have one, and once you set it up, you can't change it through that email. 
There are ways yeah. you can obviously change it, but not not right. like that. <clears throat> it it comes up. <clears throat> excuse me. It comes up saying invalid uh, email for recovery. Yeah, which is it fine. didn't ask for. You, it didn't ask me for more than one. It just after. The security questions that asked me for the one security backup email address, and then that mm -hmm. was it. Yeah, so I don't quite understand where all that came from. Yeah. All right, on to apps. You can dance better than I can. <laughs> all right, so this is an app. I just saw this today. There's a similar app, and I forgot the name of it, but this one that I saw today allows your iPad to work like an 80s stereo system. The reason why I, I like this is because growing up, my dad had a Yamaha CR2020. Google it. It was awesome. It was an amazing, amazing, amazing stereo system. And even though this isn't that, it it tries to sort of like give you the vibe of, of running something like a stereo like that from, from the day. But the cool thing is that if you look, there's a video and it shows you where you can eject a disc. And if you want to use a new disc, if you want to use a, or a new disc, if you want to play a new album, it brings up a library like it's on a shelf Ooh, of all these you know. CDs, like the spines. And then you click on one and then it opens up and then you can press play. There's a there is one I, I don't know exactly how you get there, but it shows the song being played on vinyl, hmm. virtual vinyl, and then you can mm -hmm. actually virtually take the needle and move it Ooh. to a different part of the album. Hmm. I, I, it was is really amazing, but That's I only nice. They put some thought into this. Yeah, I, I I was looking at this from a developer's point of view. I'm going, damn, this, this is, is for nice. the iPad. This is for the iPad. Awesome. It's called Beat Blaster. And yeah, totally download that. Yeah, I found it only like maybe half an hour or, maybe, or or longer before we started recording, so I didn't get a chance to actually play with it. Mm -hmm. But there was another app that had uh, I can't remember the name, but it it looked like a, an eighty stereo uh, system, but it was a, it wasn't this app; it was a different one, and it had a tape deck, and so. It it nice, sort of used nice. those those old tape decks as as the paradigm of playing the the song. Yeah. And um, I don't know what I would actually do with it, but it looks cool. I mean, I'm quite happy. That's, Look, That's all I ask for. I, I'm, using, I, I'm using just the standard music app on the iPad. I don't need mm -hmm. to have something like this, but it's... No, it's, I'll pay you good nice. money for a good-looking app. Right. If it's, if it's built well and does what it's supposed to do, then I, I think I'll give it a Indeed. shot. Indeed. Indeed. Yep. Form and function. All right. That's what's it. yours? So I've uh, I've got this app. I don't know if you've heard about it or not yet. Um, it's a little app called Evernote. I think I've heard of it. I Maybe. I think these guys are on to something. <laughs> um, I think they might go far. So they've got an app for the Mac, uh, the iPhone, iPad, Windows, Android, pretty much uh, everything. everything. Um, I've had it for a while. It's just been sitting on my phone for a while. And I didn't really start using it until just recently. Um, a lot of the times when I when I need to take notes, I use the the note app, you know, mm -hmm. the one I app. do the same thing. Um, it already mails to my, my email, you know, and kind of syncs through iCloud. I mean, what do I need? And links and stuff. Um, usually, I don't know. I didn't... I don't usually link a whole lot from news articles or anything. Um, but recently, I've been using it to make notes in um, for work just because I can then email. And I know the Note app, again, will do this. The, the built-in Apple Note app will do this. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of like the formatting better in Evernote. So you have it's it's kind of like a rich text editor in Evernote. So then I can make notes and have them formatted, you know, all nice and everything with bullets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then email those out to my coworkers and stuff like that, um, or you know, host share them, uh, have them draw, uh, uh, download them, kind of like a Dropbox, but not really. Um, but more importantly. Uh, I just noticed today that the uh, TUAW app, uh, the news app, actually sends to Evernote. And I know a lot of other oh, cool. news apps 
will uh, send to Evernote, you know, with their action button where it's like, tweet this or Facebook this or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, They'll also say, you know, send this to Evernote. Um, I just noticed that TUAW does this, and so I just started doing it specifically for this show to kind of bookmark stuff that I was reading for show notes for the show. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of a nice way because I really, if I'm walking around and I'm, I'm doing stuff and I'm on my phone and I'm, you know, or I'm just like kind of sitting waiting for something to to go through or download. I'm on my phone doing something. I I hate. I mean, I can't even I can't even really hate it because there isn't one. <laughs> um, the Google Docs on the iPhone. There yeah, isn't it's app, clunky. There isn't an app for it, so you have to go through the browser, and I hate it. Even yeah. though you know their their web interface is better than most. It's it's really difficult and and clunky on the iPhone, and there's no you know web or uh, dedicated iPhone app for it. So so I'm looking for a workaround to just literally you know bookmark news stories for mm-hmm. show notes. And so I ended up using Evernote just to, you know, as a kind of repository to send stuff to. And then later, you know, pick it out and run it through um, Google Docs. Mm-hmm. So can, that worked out well. Can you, um, I think uh, when I first started using Evernote, you couldn't share documents with other people. Could you do that now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can share notes. You can open notes up to um, to either, you know, share um, explicitly, kind of like you could with Mobile Me, mm-hmm. where you could have stuff in your Mobile Me iDisk and then you know share one thing and then add invitees to it. Uh, you can do that, or you can make stuff just completely public. Oh, well, that's interesting. Or okay. you know, just email. It's um, been a while since I've used it. I should probably give it another shot, which I'll probably. The one thing, yeah. Again, um, with sending to Evernote from other apps, is that you can tag stuff. Mm-hmm. So that makes it really nice. If you start using it full bore, then you know you if you've started tagging all your notes and stuff, then you can just kind of collate through that, just through the tags that you've made. Okay. All right. Cool. So maybe maybe you can you and I can try that for show notes. How do you yeah. think it would work for that? Would it work? Um. Or do you want to just stick with Google Docs? I think Google Docs is a better. Um, repository because it's it's like one place one bucket that we can both dump into and everything's the same oh the that's way true it sends to evernote is each link that i send is made is made into a new note oh okay and it and they're not even um collected in the one notebook mm-hmm. so the only way to collect them all together is through the tags mm-hmm. that i've pre-done on them so if you search by tags, and then that's the only way to kind of collect them all together. Um, so it's kind of, I mean, there it's not, it's not all one big repository. And also, I'd have to make each separate note public or whatever, or invite you to each one. And so, okay, all right. Well, I'll take another look at them. I'm, I actually launched it now, and it says sending changes in a, in my um, network icon is spinning. So. Uh, I got a lot to do. Yeah, I got a lot to do. All right, we're going to go. We're done. I want to thank everybody for listening. If you want to contact us, I am at Starmic on Twitter. Casey is K A C E Y K A S O. Always want to spell that wrong. I don't know why. Just like and I always want to spell that wrong. <laughs> also, if, if you're an app developer, you want us to take a look at anything for review, <clears throat> you can contact us. Let us know. The yes. Infinite Loop Show. Wait, it's Infinite. Oh, God. I'm oh, always, you should I'm do this. I'm always botching. Yeah. Um, the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com. Gmail. The Infinite Loop Show dot com. Dot Infinite com. Loop TV is our Twitter ID. Infinite Loop That's TV. That's what it is. Infinite Loop on, uh, on Facebook, on the Google Plus. <laughs> on the Google on Plus. The interwebs. <laughs> yep. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody, and watching. Yay! Bye.